Welcome to the Yamaha DM7 Training and Certification Program. I'm Chip Allen, this is Britt Rogers, and this is Russ Long, your instructors for this course. We'll guide you through setting up and mastering the DM7, covering hardware, software, and tips to enhance your workflow and audio experience. During the training, we'll primarily use the DM7 and DM7 controller setup. However, if you have a different configuration, like the DM7 Compact, rest assured that the features and lessons apply across all DM7 configurations. If you're familiar with CL, QL, Rivage, and other Yamaha digital console workflows, you'll find many similarities in operation, which will help you quickly adapt to this desk. Regardless of your experience level, there's something valuable in this lesson for everyone. Furthermore, DM7 integrates seamlessly with your existing real stage boxes, optimizing your current infrastructure and investment. This course is a deep dive into DM7 features, applications, and tips and tricks to help you succeed in the operation of the console series. Modules cover getting started with licenses, network setup, firmware updates, show file transfers, all the way through to your first sound check. The operational module covers software and hardware essentials such as toolbar navigation, Dante setup, I.O. configurations, ending in theater mode. For optimal learning, download the DM7 editor. Keep it handy during sessions. During the lessons, look for icons highlighting tips and tricks to enrich your experience. As time goes on, we may add new modules. For questions, send us an email. We're dedicated to your success and happy to help. Congratulations on starting this journey. Let's dive in. Welcome to the operational module of the DM7 certification. We'll take a look and dive deep into the different operational features of how to get the most out of the DM7 and your mix. First, we're gonna take a look at the DM7 GUI. Let's start by looking at the icons. There are multiple ways that the operator can interact with the DM7 touchscreen GUI. Let's take a look at the icons you will see. The double box icon signifies a pop-up window. Pressing this icon will open up the pop-up window to show additional details for that section. Touch on the exit icon to close. The double arrow box expands the section to show additional parameters and information. Once expanded, the exception will provide the inverted icon, which will reduce the screen back to the default condensed view. When it comes to interacting with the parameter settings on screen, the parameters will be accessible by the screen encoders below. This provides the user with a tactile way of adjusting specific parameters. If we look at the channel strip across the top of the selected channel view, the analog gain section level is shown. Touching on a section like this will highlight the parameter with a purple frame, which indicates that it can be adjusted by the touch and turn knob. To make adjustments on the screen, touch and drag vertically or horizontally. This is a really quick way to make adjustments on screen. This will apply to any section that shows parameters with a value such as digital gain, channel delay, panning, and fader level. Touching on the EQ in Dyne 1 and 2 sections in the selected channel view will highlight and expand the section. The EQ section has additional screen gestures with the EQ, touch and drag EQ gain and frequencies and pinch in and out to adjust the Q of the EQ band. Three finger gestures will adjust frequency gains below zero and four finger gestures will adjust all frequency gains not set at zero. This next section, we're going to talk about the toolbar. Let's go. Let's look at the touchscreen GUI, starting from the top and working our way down. At the very top, we have the toolbar. The toolbar is always visible regardless of what screen you are viewing. It's the utility section that provides important information and access vital to the operation of the console. On the far left is the scene section, which shows the current scene active and the next two available scenes in the console. You can touch in that section and it will open up to the scene memory section. Here you can store and recall scenes, protect specific scenes, and manage the order. Touch again and it will close the scene memory view. Next is the meter bridge. There is a drop down arrow to the right of the meter bridge that will allow you to select the meter bridge view. The meter bridge is grouped in sections of 12 channels. Touching each section will allow fader bank navigation. 
This method allows quick operation when locating a specific bank of channels. Next are the patch and rack sections of the DM7. You can also access these sections in the menu bar, but this allows for quick access as you are programming the console. Patch provides access to input and output patching, as well as other patching features such as output port, recording, and sub-in. There's also a grid view, which allows for a more traditional grid style patching view. Rack provides direct access to the DM7 effects, which includes the premium effects and EQ racks. The last icon in the toolbar is the menu bar. Touching this icon displays a drop down menu of items used for user setup and global parameters. Depending on what is selected, it may display a sub menu with additional selections. Notice, you can access the patch and rack views here as well. This next section is on the selected channel view. Let's get started. The selected channel view is one of the two default views that can be accessed by toggling the home key. This view represents the currently selected channel as designated by the SCL button in the fader bank. Starting from the top, after the toolbar is the channel strip signal flow section. First is channel name, which includes the default name and the user program channel label. Pressing the left right arrows allows you to select additional channels in a linear fashion and touching the custom name opens up a drop down window that allows you to directly select a specific channel. Next is the patch section. Touching this section opens a drop down window giving direct access to patching for the selected channel. Keep in mind that all input channels have an A and B input. This allows you to have two source inputs assigned to a channel and switch between those two sources. In other words, your main mic and your backup mic. Next is the phantom and polarity section. These icons will illuminate when in use and touching on this section will open a drop down window to activate. Next is the analog and or digital gain and metering. If the channel is not patched to an analog source, the analog section will be blank. Touching on this section will open the game view to allow access to additional parameters, including a 12 channel view. Next is the select a channel built in processing. Each channel has a four band parametric EQ with high pass filter and low pass filters. Input channels have two dynamics processors while output channels will only have one. In order for these processors to work, they need to be turned on by pressing the EQ in the Dyne 1 or 2 on screen. The order of the EQ in Dyne 2 can be changed so that the EQ is at the end of the processing chain. Drag Dyne 2 over top of the EQ and it will switch positions. For output channels, it will be only Dyne 1. Just like EQ, when you touch in the dynamic section, it will assign the parameters to the screen encoders. The encoder mode button will override this function when activated. Next is the four insert racks. This is where you can insert additional channel processing, whether from one of the rack effects in the console or additional processing outside of the console, analog or digital. The inserts as a block of four can be placed at the desired point in the signal path, pre-filter, pre-dynamics one, pre-fader or post on. The next section is channel delay. The DM7 allows up to 1000 milliseconds of delay per channel. Double tapping this section will open up the delay section for access to scale selection, delay point, multi-channel view, and channel delay activation. The delay parameter will highlight to show that it is on. The channel delay can be placed at the desired point in the signal path, pre-filter, pre-dyne one, pre-fader, or post-fader. Next, you have pan and stereo A and B assignment, fader level, Q assignment, and channel on or mute indicators. Just like the gain sections in the channel strip, double tapping on the delay, pan, and fader sections will provide a pop-up view for access to additional parameters. The next section shows the channel library access. This provides a pop-up of, depending on the selected channel, the input or output channel library. Each library provides you with up to 100 registers to capture all channel parameters on a selected channel as a preset for later recall. Moving on to the right, you have an additional view of the four insert racks. This shows a more detailed view of the four inserts and what is mounted. Remember to turn on the insert rack for it to process the audio in the channel. The next icon represents the Dugan Auto Mixer. Touching this icon opens up the view for the Dugan Auto Mixer. You have up to 64 channels of auto mixing that can be applied to any input channel. 
The auto mixer view allows you to easily patch channel inserts that have already been configured as post fader as required for proper Dugan operation. Once the channel is patched, the auto mixer is activated. Below the channel library is the channel metering. This will represent the input level of the channel based on the selected metering point. If the channel is patched to an analog source, a histogram will appear to the left of the channel metering. Touching on the meter will open up the metering point window, which provides a selection of metering points globally for all channels as well as peak hold and the resetting of the histogram. The EQ and the dynamics section give a compact view of the channel processes. Expanding each of these views will show additional features and parameters such as RTA settings in the EQ and the histogram and processor selection in the dynamics. To the right of the channels are your selected channel send levels overview. This gives you the view of all your mixed sends for the selected channel. At a glance, it will show the send levels of the channel to the prospective mixes and matrices. Touching in this section will assign send levels to the screen encoders and double tapping will expand the send window to additional parameters and features. The selected channel view displays a graphical representation of the channel signal flow from input to output. Below the mix matrix overview, you have the recall, solo, and mute safe indicators. Touching on that section will allow you to activate those parameters from the selected channel. Below that, you have your DCA and mute group assignment indicators. Touching on this section will open up the window to assign the selected channel to the DCA and mute groups. At the very bottom of the screen are the channel input level meters, dynamics one and two metering, channel names and fader numerical values. Touching on this section will select that particular channel and a double tap will bring up the name window which allows custom naming of channel and assigning icons and colors. This next section will cover the 12 channel view. This is a condensed view of a typical analog style console. Let's get started. The 12 channel view provides a condensed view of a traditional analog console. Toggle the home key to switch from the selected channel view to the 12 channel view. Touching on any section in this view will bring up that expanded view for that channel. Starting from the top, you will see the channel name and color. You will see a condensed view of direct out, channel delay, and Dugan auto mixer indicators, and channel levels. When these parameters are turned on, the indicators will illuminate. Next is the send view button. Touch this will switch the view to the mix matrix overview for each channel. The bottom up and down arrows provide individual selection of the sends and touching on the sends level section allows access to the send level parameter via either touch and turn knob or touch and drag in the screen. Touching on the send button will revert it back to the default 12 channel view showing the channel processing. In this view, you will see the gain section. The gain parameter will change to reflect the input source patched to the channel, either analog or digital. These levels can be adjusted in screen or with the touch and turn knob. Double tap will expand the view. Below that is the phantom power and polarity indicators. Touch on this section for a pop-up view to activate these functions. The dynamics and EQ section show a graphical representation of the current settings and, for dynamics, the gain reduction meter. When a processor is turned on, that section will be illuminated. Just like in the selected channel view, you can move the dynamics before the EQ by touching and dragging. Next is the condensed view of the four insert racks, which will show the names of the processors currently mounted. If the name is grayed out, it is mounted but bypassed or the insert section is not turned on. Touching in this section will expand the view to access mounting and activation. Below this, you will have pan and stereo A and B and DCA and mute group assignment indicators. Touch here for access. The main bay utility screen offers a unique view into the DM7 console. It provides more information than the left and center bay provide alone. Let's dive in. The main bay has a smaller screen compared to the left and center bays. This is the main bay utility screen. This screen provides you access to alternate views of sections available in the left and center bay screens and it also adds additional features not available in the other screens. Let's go through the sections on the main bay utility screen. At the top, you'll have your assist indicator. That icon will be in motion to let you know that either the HA or fader assist feature is active. 
The home icon will always bring you back to the home default view. The utility screen default view will display a selection of icons. The firmware you are running will determine what is displayed. Use the define keys as the first soft key option. Touching the soft key will bring up an additional four banks of 12 unique UDKs programmable by the user. UDKs provide the user with quick keys or shortcuts to various operations and parameters in the console. Next is the monitor soft key. This gives a condensed view of the monitor section for easy selection of monitor source select and AB monitor bus selection. There is also a fader parameter section that controls the overall output of the A or B monitor bus. To change this level, you will need to do it on screen by touch and drag. The scene list gives you a condensed view of your scene memories and allows store, recall, and update functions. The Assist soft key will provide access to the AI Assist features, HA and Fader Assist. Yamaha also provides a QR code for feedback on this feature to facilitate future improvement. The Save and Load soft key provides access to the USB ports for the loading and saving of console file data. If a USB drive is inserted in either of the two ports, you can select the correct port and view the file directory of that drive. Both USB ports have the same functionality, but only one port at a time can be used for saving and loading of files or audio recording and playback. The loudness meter is a function that comes with the broadcast package upgrade. This will open the loudness meter window. Lastly, we have the system soft key. This allows access to the license activation for the broadcast and theater packages. The unit mode will change the mode of the console between default and split mode and adjust the mix in allocation when in split mode. Switching between modes will require a console reboot. The law will provide console information based on warning messages and other critical and non-critical issues. A filter is provided for convenience and the law can be exported to a USB drive for further technical support. The right side of the utility screen is the stereo A or B metering. Touching on this meter will provide access to the peak hold activation and meter setup window. Above the stereo metering, there is a blank section that is only activated when a channel is in queue. When queued, this space is populated by the queue meter. In addition to providing metering of a queued channel, it is also a quick way to defeat the queue function. Simply touch on the meter to clear the queue for the entire console. Below the main stereo meter is a drop-down menu for four banks of the four user-defined knobs below the utility screen. Touch and drag can also be applied here for on-screen adjustment.